This video is about fiber reinforced concrete, an amazing tool for your concrete designs. For example, if you want to make architectural concrete with complicated designs like this, or if you want to make concrete countertops that are super thin, you want to make very thin concrete overlays, so thin you cannot put rebar inside them. In fact, fiber reinforced concrete is getting so popular that you can buy it in bags in the store. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete freak and this video is for you my concrete maniacs out there because I love to teach you about concrete. Well, I, in this video at the end, I'm gonna be telling is answering this question, can we use fibers instead of rebar in our concrete? I'll answer that, but you gotta wait to the end to hear about it. Let's start at the beginning. Why do we need reinforcement in our concrete? Well, concrete is weak in tension. What does that mean? Well, it means if I have a beam that looks like this and I go and I load it, at one side of the beam, it's gonna get closer together, and the other side of the beam, it's gonna get pulled apart. The place where it's close together, that's called compression, and the part that's pulled apart, that's called tension. And concrete, it's weak in tension. <laughs> that's why it cracks there. Then when you see a crack like this, you know concrete has it exceeded its tensile capacity, and oh my God, makes me wanna cry. This is why we use reinforcement inside of our concrete. And when you see people tying big mats of steel like this, yeah, look at all that steel, look at all that labor. That's what typical we have to do for our concrete to keep our crack small. So when we have crack like this and I use rebar inside of it, yeah, like a rebar like that, if that concrete is pulled on, try to make that crack larger, what happens is load goes through the concrete. That's what I'm showing in yellow. Yeah, load transferring through the concrete and it goes through that rebar. and. All of that load is transferred at one point, but it's a very strong point, a very big point, and that's exciting. And But there's also benefits of this. Um, the cracks are small where the bar is, but they're not necessarily small in other locations. This is a possibly useful fiber. This is another amazing fiber that you can use inside of your concrete. These fibers are added while you are making the concrete, like as in when you're mixing all the ingredients together. So it looks like this, yeah fibers going everywhere. That's like a good thing. And inside the cracked concrete, look at all those fibers. They're all there to help keep that crack small. What am I talking about? Well, if I could look inside of that concrete and see those fibers with x-ray vision, it would look like this. And as I go to pull on that same bit of concrete, the load would go everywhere. It would go all to the different places inside of the concrete. That's the benefit of fiber reinforced concrete. There's a lot of load transfer in a ton of different places. And what this does for you is it helps keep the crack sizes small everywhere. Super beneficial, super awesome, crazy valuable tool for your concrete. Now here's a picture of real life where we have just rebar on the right and we have rebar plus fiber on the left. And look at the difference. You can kind of see the crack size being um, um, so much smaller on the left. There's actually 50% smaller. That's pretty amazing and I'll talk more about that coming up later. So how do fibers work? I mean, how do they help keep that crack small? Well, if I could look inside the concrete, it looks like this. That's my crack and that's my fiber. And as my crack tries to get larger and larger, the fiber help hold, holds it together. They, it, it, it holds it together all along the length. So the fibers, they don't stop the crack from forming. No, 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 no. What they do is they help keep the cracks that do form very, very small inside your concrete. And if you can't really see the crack, is it really there? For a lot of owners, it's not. But small cracks equal long life concrete, and that is what we want. So fibers give the concrete strength after cracking, and people call this toughness, right? It's, uh, it resists a lot of load. But what are the types of fibers that are out there? Well, I have listed here five different fibers, steel, glass, basalt, soft plastic, stiff plastic, and there may be others that are out there. And the soft plastic is also known as microsynthetic, and the stiff plastic is also known as macrosynthetic fibers, but we're gonna be talking about all of these today. But when are they useful? Because actually you don't use all the fibers all the time. You have to know what they're good at. Well, there's something called plastic shrinkage cracking. That's cracks that occur when the concrete is still wet, when it's still fresh, in the first six hours or so. And they may look like this. See those parallel cracking pattern there? 
This typically happens when it's hot and it's windy, and I've got videos about it as well, but you want a high number of very flexible fibers. And some examples are soft plastic microsynthetic fibers, and I've got some videos of some of them here. Here is an example of a microsynthetic fiber, and here's another one. Now all these other fibers, all these other ones, these are cracks that occur after about six hours or so, or when the concrete is hard. They may look something like this. And for example, structural cracks, that's cracks caused by load. These fibers are great for those. Shrinkage cracks, that's cracks caused by the concrete losing moisture. These cracks are awesome for that as well. And also durability cracks, this is when something's deteriorating inside the concrete and these fibers help in that application as well. And you want stiff fibers that help bond to the concrete. They can be made of all kinds of different materials. Like here's one and here's another one. But can fibers replace rebar? I mean, can they really? Well, it depends, right? That's the great engineering answer. It depends, it's not just diapers. But I'm showing the rebar on the left and the fibers on the right. This is the same type of thing I showed you before. Rebar is good at carrying low to one spot, but not good at stopping cracks. Fibers, amazing at stopping cracks, but not as good at carrying load all in one spot. So for rebar, we typically use it in structural applications like columns and beams, and we're gonna use that for a long time. That's what rebar is amazing at. Now fibers, they're great at flat work like slabs. You can use them in elevated slabs, slabs on ground, lots of other different applications. But you might say like, I don't, really, I don't get it. Well, here's an analogy. If you're hanging from a cliff, what do you wanna hang by? Do you wanna hang by rebar or fiber? Most people are gonna say, well, I don't wanna hang at all, but if I had to, I'd hang by rebar. And another way to say this is, how do I know if I can use fibers instead of rebar? How do I know, how do I answer that question? And you have to ask yourself, is the concrete important for life safety? Because if the answer is yes, then you probably wanna use rebar. They're just more reliable. There's lots of area in one spot. You get more ductility out of it. If the answer is no, then fibers are a likely great application and a great use for you. So what if I used fibers and rebar together? Oh, my favorite. I'm a massive fan of it. Massive, massive fan of it. Cause you get stuff like this. This picture I showed you before. Again, rebar on the right, rebar plus seven and a half pounds of macro synthetic fiber on the left. And look how much smaller the crack is. That is amazing. But why are fibers, fibers great? Well, they, they provide you some reinforcement everywhere, which is awesome. They help keep your cracks small. The other thing that's awesome, the right fibers will stop plastic shrinkage cracking. But what are the challenges with fibers? Well, fibers are randomly oriented in the concrete. This means it's kind of hard sometimes to predict the structural performance of that concrete. What am I talking about? Well, if I have that same bar I showed you before and I pushed on it and I caused cracking at the bottom, yep, like this, one case may have fibers where they orient the crack and the other where they miss where the fiber where the crack misses the fiber right and 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 so we're going to get two very different levels of performance in these two locations and so it's hard to make case one happen it's hard to know but i, I wouldn't worry about it too too much some fibers will help and some fibers will not in this case and this is why it's tough to predict how fibers will perform but if you get enough of them in there then they will help and they will do something useful for you so, but fibers can cause your slump to decrease or your workability, your flowability of your concrete to decrease, but don't worry, you can adjust your mix to deal with that and your finishing practices. When things go wrong, they can look like this, ugh, like a hairy slab, like fiber sticking up out of the slab, but don't worry, you can design your mixes, you can, to make sure that this doesn't happen. You just have to know what you're doing. And I do a ton of fiber reinforced concrete designs all over the world. But fibers also can increase the cost of your concrete by 10 to 15%. And so that is something that you need to be aware of. They're not free, right? But in summary, fibers are often the only reinforcement choice for really thin members or members that are really too complicated for you to use rebar in. But when life safety is not an issue, fibers can definitely be used instead of rebar and you should think about that and use fibers and rebars together, what an amazing, amazing product you will get out of that. And not all fibers are the same and you have to understand how to use them and I'll have 
more videos about that coming up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Check me out at concretefreaks.com, one of my new websites, and also on the gram and the book at concrete.tyler. Take care, my concrete crazies. Peace.